everyone, what is up? My name is Kay and today I'm going to show you guys what I'm packing in our suitcase for my service dog on our first cruise that we're going on. We're so excited. Um, so we will be leaving for a Disney cruise in just a few days and I thought I'd show you guys what we're packing. Packing for a cruise is kind of different than packing for anything else because if you forget something you can't just like run out to Target and get it or go to a pet store or Amazon, like none of that. You're in the middle of the ocean. So especially dog stuff that they won't necessarily have extras of on board. It's just kind of like more stuff to think about. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video and show you guys what I'm packing for my service dog on our upcoming Disney cruise. Zina, forward. Yes, good boy. I think I'll start off with like one human thing and then I'll do like dog things for the rest of them. So first off, I just got myself a little travel size lint roller. It's just it's just a lint roller, but it's tiny. Um, I have a golden retriever. He sheds a lot. This should come in handy, especially when we have to like look more formal for dinner and stuff. Okay, now everything else is my dogs. So first I'll start off with his life vest. We're going to be swimming in the ocean. Of course, he's not allowed in swimming pools on the boat, but he will be allowed in the ocean when we're at the beach. So I just threw his life vest in a trash bag so it wouldn't get stuff gross. More so on the way back than the way there. But this is what his life vest looks like. It's rough wear and red. What I like about this life vest is that it has a D-ring right here by the handle. And so I attach a, here you can see this pull strap is what I use. I attach a pull strap to the D-ring and then I'm able to have him guide me while wearing his life vest, which is super helpful. Anyway, this is his life vest. It's going to go in my suitcase instead of his because it's just big. It takes up a lot of space. So I'm going to have it in this trash bag and then just lay flat on the bottom of my suitcase. Okay, now I'm going to show you everything in my dog's suitcase. And then after that, we'll get on to the carry-on. But first, oh, let's start with his suitcase. I don't know how much you can really see it, but this is what it looks like. It's a suitcase. Um, so let's just go through it. First, I'll show you this. This is his harness. Um, this is not the harness that he uses when he works. It's more of a play harness that we have. But when we're on the beach, I want to just use this as his working harness with a pull strap for him to guide me. And that way he can just, um, like we can leave his nice harness on the ship and we don't have to worry about it getting stolen or anything or dirty on the beach. Um, of course, this is not like the safest or best way to guide um, with just a pull strap on a harness, but I'm just going to be using it to like walk around the beach with my family, so there won't really be anything too dangerous, like it, it should be all that I need. I've used this before and it works, but I would say definitely if you're going to say, you know, a big city all by yourself, definitely don't rely on this as your guide harness. But for walking around the beach with your family for a day, in my opinion, this is fine, even though it might not be the safest. All right, moving on. Next, I guess I'll just show you his food. We have two bags of food. We have his dinner and his breakfast, one for each day. He has a probiotic and a medicine that he takes with dinner, so I have them already in his bags. Each of these bags has each meal, like, single served, like, portioned out in here for him, so it's super easy. I'll just grab out, you know, one thing from whichever bag, depending on the time of day, and that's what he'll eat. Pretty self-explanatory. Wrote a B on the breakfast one and a D on the dinner one um, with a sharpie and big, like a big writing, so I'm able to read it. But this would be a good time to use braille labels if you have less vision than me. And, you know, you can't read sharpie, but I can, so this is what I did. All right, next I have his toothbrush and toothpaste. Self-explanatory. Then, okay, this bag is medical stuff that he could possibly need. Um, I have some extra probiotics in here, a bunch of little socks that he wears if he hurts his paw, some gauze, um, the boot that he wears if he gets a paw injury. That's only ever happened once, but with my luck it would happen on a cruise ship, so we have that here. Um, also some medications he could potentially need, um, but yeah, basically just a little doggy first aid kit. We have Neosporin in here, um, anything he could need especially since we'll be in the middle of the ocean and we can't get things in case of an emergency really so I'm trying to just have everything we need here. Also I asked the vet for some information about like what to do if he gets seasick and stuff like that and wrote it down on a piece of paper since I can't just call the vet and ask if we're having a problem. Um, realistically I don't think anything will go wrong. Hopefully I don't touch this bag the whole time but it's good to have. Next he has his earmuffs which look like this. 
They are little doggy earmuffs because they're going to be um, fireworks on the ship. There will be a fireworks show and that's damaging to dogs' ears. And there will also be um, a kind of like a fire drill, but like an emergency drill at the beginning of the cruise, which will have really loud sirens, which could also potentially damage his hearing. So we're keeping him safe. I have been working for the past week or so to get him desensitized to these or I don't know if that's the right word, to get him not to mind these because he's pretty gear shy and he does not like things on his head, but we've worked through it and he wears these without complaining now, so that was a success. Next I guess I'll show you a fun thing. So I brought him two new dog toys. Um, these are both from Bark Shop. They're brand new, he hasn't seen them before, and he's asleep right now so he's still not seeing them. This one is a hat, so he will wear this. Um, there's actually one day on the Disney cruise where everyone dresses up like pirates for fun, so he'll wear this for his pictures and then he can play with it afterwards. And that's why this is like pirate themed as well. On the topic of toys, here are two Nyla bones for him. He loves his Nyla bones. He definitely should get to keep chewing even though we're going to be away. So this is also a nice quiet thing for him to do in our room where, you know, he won't be bothering anyone, but it should help him relax and feel comfortable. Next, this is some like grooming sort of stuff. I actually should probably add a brush to this now that I'm thinking of it, but I have his shampoo and conditioner in these little travel silicone containers. I got them from Target. Um, I also wrote, you know, S and C for shampoo and conditioner on them. Again, if you don't have enough vision to read that, this would be a good time to use braille labels, but I do have enough vision to read it, so I just wrote it. So we have that for him, and then also um, ear wipes. So I don't use ear wipes with him, I never have before, I just use like the solution and the cotton rounds, but um, I'm gonna need to clean his ears after swimming so he doesn't get an ear infection and it just wasn't realistic to bring, um, you know, like that solution stuff because it always spills everywhere, like even when you're not traveling, so I thought wipes would be the more sensible way to travel and bring something to clean his ears and this is like a really small container, I think it has 25 wipes in it, so should be all that we need for the cruise and yeah little shampoo and conditioner because after he's swimming on the beach he's going to be disgusting and he will need a bath um luckily i checked on the cruise ship they have the type of shower heads that like detach from the wall so i'll have no trouble giving him a bath in our stateroom at our cruise ship all right next i have a leash this is um the rough wear slack line leash i plan to use this for swimming i know i've said in other videos that i got a different leash to use for swimming but i changed my mind and i want to use this it's not waterproof, but I got him, the biothane pole strap that I showed you before is technically waterproof, but it rusted um, literally after one time using it. So now I'm kind of afraid to use his biothane leash in the water. So I think I trust Ruffwear more not to um, rust. So I'm gonna use this and hope for the best because I really like this leash. Um, next I'll show you his boots. We are bringing two pairs of Ruffwear Grip Trex boots. We're gonna need these because it'll be hot out. Hot pavement means boots. So, we have one pair that's black, and one pair that is, what is this color called? Blue. A blue pair as well. Um, we have two, so that if they get wet at the beach or whatever, we'll have a spare. The beach in the Bahamas that we go to on our cruise is like really shelly, and I'm afraid that it'll cut his paws. I always wear shoes in that beach because like it like, would cut me otherwise it's really sharp so I'm gonna make him wear boots which he's not gonna like because he'll think he's not able to swim but I'll at least have him wear boots until we get to the part where he can't stand I don't know we'll see but either way we're gonna need two pairs for that next I have a bunch of little bandanas for him um, these are all just made out of fabric I got at Joanne Fabrics so you can just go get this fabric and make your dog bandanas if you want um, we have five bandanas for a four-day cruise, so it might be a little overboard, but that's okay. Um, first we have this Toy Story one, which I'm hoping he'll get to meet the Toy Story characters on the ship while he's wearing it, and it'll be adorable. Um, next is a Lion King bandana, which looks like this. And the next one is this, like, Disney travel-themed bandana that I think we're gonna wear when we get on the ship. Oh, also I have a Lion King shirt, so one day we'll match in Lion King stuff, but... Anyway, he also has this one, which is just kind of like a generic Disney Cruise kind of look with Mickey and Minnie on it. And then the last one is his most fun one, and it's this pirate bandana with these little, like, puffy pom-pom balls on it. Um, so this will be his pirate outfit, and, like, look at how cute it is. I'm so excited. 
Okay, almost done. A few more things. Next we have his rough wear cooling coat. I guess I can open it up and show you. I've talked about this before in videos. It's going to be warm. He'll probably need a cooling coat. Actually, I don't know if it'll be warm enough for him to need it, but we might as well have it. I think it'll be like 70s, so I don't know. We'll see. If it gets warmer one day, we will have a cooling coat. All right, last thing in this bag is his pop-up water bowls. We have two of them, one for water, one for food. Um, these are really nice. They're from the Seeing Eye, but they have an actual like lid that snaps on and off, um, and then they pop up. I really like the lid because it makes it easier to travel with them because you can have it in your bag. Um, the kinds without a lid, you have to actually snap to the outside of your bag so it doesn't get everything gross, or you have to put it in a baggie, and like, it's just kind of annoying, so I like these for traveling. Alright, now let's move on to talking about our carry-on. I'm just bringing this backpack as our carry-on. Um, I don't have all my stuff in it yet, but that doesn't matter. So, let's start. First, I'll show you this. This is kind of obvious, I guess, but this is our service dog travel folder that we take with us every time we fly. It's a good idea you know, to have all your important stuff together in one place. So on one side I have the, what's it called? The like service animal relief areas or the pet relief areas in some airports um, where dogs are able to go to the bathroom in the airport. Um, I have maps of those for every airport we've been to. Every time we go to a new airport, I print out, you know, another set of maps. So we have that to help us find where he can go to the bathroom. And then on this side we have the laws. What wow, everything's falling. So, um, I have here, I'll just take it out and show you all of them. First, I have the Air Carriers Act, which is everything you need to know about service dogs traveling and like the laws and stuff. And I highlighted the important parts. All right, next, this is the Airbnb service dog policy. And again, I highlighted the important parts because we've stayed in Airbnbs before and we had an access issue at an Airbnb before, so that comes in handy. Um, next, this is the ADA, like the Q&A stuff from their webpage, and I highlighted, again, the important parts. I highlighted the parts that um, go along with hotel stays because that's like specifically where I was expecting to have access issues traveling. I might have highlighted some other stuff. I don't remember and I can't read it, but yeah, this I mostly have in here for staying at hotels. Next, this is the laws in the Bahamas, which is where we're cruising to. Um, I thought I was going to need this for a port adventure that we were going on, but then we decided not to do that, so I don't think I'll need this at all, but I have it with me just in case. And again, highlighted the important parts. And then last, I have his review certificate. I don't know if there's private information on here or not, so I won't show it to you, but review certificate. Um, this is just a copy of it. Legally, like, you don't have to have all the laws printed out and stuff in order to travel with your service dog. But sometimes people at airports are uneducated, so I just prefer to have it all with me. Um, I've never had anyone ask for the rabies vaccine stuff, but I think that they can ask for it, maybe? I don't know. I just have it with me, and if someone wants it, they can see it. Um, but you'll notice I don't have any like proof that he's a service dog, or service dog certification, or anything in here, because that's not a thing. If you have an ESA or a psychiatric service dog, then you do need a doctor's note, I believe, but I don't have either of those things. I have just a task trained service dog for non-psychiatric purposes, so he doesn't need any, you know, proof of training or certification or anything like that. Oh, I also have a folder of information for the cruise, which is like the vet forms saying that he's healthy enough to go to the Bahamas and that sort of thing, like the stuff to legally allow him into the Bahamas. Um, but I don't have that. Well, I have the paperwork, but I don't have it filled out yet because our vet appointment is not for a few days. So anyway, I'll have a folder with all that stuff too and a bunch of copies of that stuff, but I will have a folder with all of that information on the paperwork and copies of the paperwork. Um, it is kind of a long and tedious process to bring your dog to a different country, so definitely you can't really do a cruise as like a spur of the moment thing. If you're leaving the country, you need to do the paperwork months in advance and we had to like physically mail something to the Bahamas and they had to mail it back and it was just, it was a long process, but I mean, obviously it was worth it. Anyway, sorry, tangent. Okay, this is my carry-on that we're going through. Let's keep going through it. I think there's only like two more things. So next I have food for him. I have just two meals in case if um, either our flight gets delayed or our luggage gets lost or anything happens, I have two meals for him right here. So we will be okay. And these are two extra meals that are not included in like my count of how much food to pack that I put in his real suitcase. So 
you know, if we end up stuck there for a few extra days because, you know, there's a delay or something, we have some extra food. Okay, and the last thing in my carry-on, I just dropped it, here it is, is our kind of emergency kit of anything we could possibly need if something goes wrong in an airport. So, I will go through this so I can show you what's inside. And I want to take it all out. I'll take it all out for you. You're welcome. So, we have some paper towels. If there's a spill, we have to clean up. We have a puppy pad. Um, I don't know that I necessarily have to show you. You know what one of these is. This is um, a thing he could go potty on. If there's nowhere for him to go to the bathroom, we could go into the bathroom in like the handicapped stall and set this up. If it was an absolute emergency and he could go to the bathroom on it. Or if he has an accident, we could use this to clean it up. Neither of those things would ever, ever, ever happen, but again, this is an emergency kit, not a kit of things that I actually plan on using. Um, next, we have a few grooming wipes that I put in a Ziploc baggie in case if we have some type of grooming catastrophe or he gets covered in diarrhea or who knows what if we need grooming wipes. We have a few. Next, a few poop bags. You never know when those could come in handy. Next, these are just some little, like, wipies if, you know, I need to clean my hands after dealing with something gross or anything like that comes up. Also, I'm going to put a few treats in this bag. I just didn't yet because all the treats that I have in my house are peanut butter and I know that like I shouldn't bring peanut stuff onto a plane just in case if someone has an allergy. So I'll run out to the store like tomorrow and just get some treats that are not peanut. So, you know, to be respectful of the other people on the plane. Hello friends, V from the future here. Um, I'm just jumping into this video to tell you guys one or two things that I forgot to mention in my what I packed video. So we just got to our hotel room here we are, um, in our hotel room. So, obviously at this point we're done packing and we're here. So I just thought I'd show you guys two things that I totally forgot to mention in the video. First, most obviously, his crate. Um, he still sleeps in a crate every night. It's what works for us. And so, of course we packed his crate. Um, I can show you, it's the nose to nose soft crate. And it looks like this. Um, it's super great to fly with because it folds up so compactly and then we just checked it on the plane and we put a luggage tag on it. Um, yeah, I can show you how it unfolds quick actually if you want to see. The two sides just unbuckle. Here is Zenith looking out the window. He loves having a window even though there's nothing to see out of it. But anyway, sorry, getting off topic. So, the two sides unclip like so and then it just pops up pops up like that and then on the inside it clicks into place. I can show you on the other one. So it just, ah, can you see it? So it's like this, it goes up and shoot up and over. There. Ah, I got it out of frame. Well, you get the idea. This thing slides from there over there. Um, and that's all there is to it. It's set up. We can just zip it and it's good to go. I love this crate for traveling and yeah, definitely packed that. The other thing I forgot to mention, here's my suitcase. I actually didn't forget to mention, I just changed my mind. I ended up getting a little cheap leash from the grocery store to bring to use when we're swimming in the ocean. I just didn't want to risk my nice rough wear leash, you know, resting. And this one, I know it will rest because I've used these before, but it was like $4 from the grocery store. So that's what I'm going to do. It's six feet. I'm just going to tie it around my waist to make a DIY hands-free leash. But yeah, those are the two things that I forgot to mention. Hi, Zenith. Oh, you have your bone? That's so fun. All right, but sorry, back to your regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Okay, that was everything I packed for my cruise. I hope you found this helpful if you're going on a cruise with your service dog. I'm so excited for mine, so I'm sure you're super excited if you're doing the same. That was weird, my camera just like stopped working, but I think we're good now, so I'm just gonna end this video really quick before it stops working again. So anyway, that was all. I showed you guys all the stuff in our suitcase and carry on, so I hope you found this helpful if you are getting ready for a cruise with your service dog. I'm so excited for our trip. Um, we don't go on vacations often, so this is just like really fun and exciting, and I love the beach, so it'll be amazing. But I plan on making a video of our airport experience, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully that can be helpful for you guys. But anyway, I'm going to go before my camera chooses not to work again. So uh, I hope you're having an awesome day. If you're going on a trip, I'm so happy for you. This is so exciting. Um, best of luck to you and your dog, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!